Um, on this problem, we're told that the mass is 80 kilograms. I'm going to write it all in the picture because I find it difficult to look at the paragraph. So I have 80 kilograms. And then I have a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.2. And I have my 15 degree angle here, so that's good. And part A says draw a detailed force diagram including all forces acting on the skier and showing the usual components of the force of gravity. So we're going to do the traditional decomposition here. Parallel and perpendicular to the ramp. And this lag issue is making this a little tricky, but I'll figure it out. There we go. Oh, I suppose I'll, I'll just go through the skier's center of mass, roughly speaking. And third time's a charm. OK. Um, I normally draw these inclines, incline the other direction, so that can make it a little tricky the first time you see one flipped around. It's good to look at it both ways. And the force of gravity, of course, is straight down. This is not much of an incline at 15 degrees. It probably feels like a lot when you're on skis, but we often deal with greater inclines. So I have a very small angle here. that is equal to the angle of incline. And I think I'll go ahead and leave this as mg for now. And I'm going to put in the components. So I'm projecting onto the perpendicular axis like that. So one component is there, pointing um, perpendicular to the surface, pushing you into the surface. And the other is the component of gravity pulling down the hill, which is why you start accelerating down hills when you wear skis. So this one is mg cosine theta. And this one is mg sine theta. OK, we got that done. And we know we have a friction problem. so we're going to need to compute the normal force. And I can go ahead and do a little calculation just in the middle of this. Um, the normal force has to be equal to the perpendicular component of gravity. So that's what's pushing you into the surface. And so the surface needs to push up on you with the same magnitude, otherwise you would jump off of the snow or sink into the snow. So that's mg cosine theta, which actually answers one of our questions. And maybe I'll just go ahead and put the numbers in right now. So it's 80 times 9.8 cosine 15 degrees. Go ahead and pop up my calculator, which I think is now set in degrees. I was doing some calculus problem yesterday, and it got set in radians. Okay, 757.3, OK. All right, and then I need to get my friction force into this diagram, and that's going to oppose the direction of slipping. It's always parallel to the surface. That's one key thing to remember about friction forces. I have room to write that it's equal to mu k times the normal force. So friction forces always act parallel to a surface, and normal forces always act perpendicular to a surface. You can avoid some mistakes by remembering that. And we'll just do the calculation real quick. So Fk is mu k times the normal force. And I think I've got everything I need. So 0 0.2 times 757.3. That's 151 and a half. Just keeping a little extra precision 
for later on. Okay, now I want the acceleration of the skier. Um, so one thing that's qualitatively wrong about my force diagram, and this doesn't break the analysis, is that I know the skier is going to slide down the hill, so that parallel component of gravity should should look bigger than the friction force, and I accidentally made the friction force look bigger than it should, just in case that was confusing anybody. So compute the acceleration. Um, so this is a question about the parallel direction. Uh, the acceleration I'm going to call positive the downward direction. Because it simplifies things. If you know which way things are accelerating and you just call that positive, then you don't have to, you don't have to deal with a bunch of minus signs. So I'm going to call it that way. Compute the acceleration of the skier. Okay, we're going to do a force analysis in this parallel direction. So I have in the positive direction, mg sine theta. In the negative direction, the kinetic friction force. That's the net force equals ma. OK, since I've already uh, directly computed the friction force, I'm going to go ahead and throw this number in. If you don't do that, one advantage is that the mass will cancel out. So. Um, it's probably kind of break even whichever way you choose to go at this point. So I'm going to throw in my 80 times 9.8 times the sine of 15 degrees minus 151.5 equals 80 times A. And I'm just going to smash that all at once in a calculator. I'll go ahead and use my real calculator right now because it's faster. And I get 0 0.64. I guess I'll keep one extra sig fig. 0 0.643 meters per second squared. OK, follow up question with kinematics in it. What's the distance traveled in the first five seconds? So starting from rest, I was good about getting that into the question. We're looking at a kinematics question with constant acceleration. I'm going to call the initial position 0. Started from rest. Final position, that's what I want. So I have 1 half times 0.643 times 5 seconds squared. And I get 8.0 meters 